Hope you are having a great day and welcome to another T-Smart Setup Guide. Today we are going to take a look at this KVM 4x2 dual monitor and it has 4 computer inputs and 2 display outputs. So we will be able to control 4 computers and 2 displays simultaneously. Now we are going to take a look at the unboxing, how to set it up and how easy it is to use it. That being said, let's go straight for it. So inside the package we will find everything that it's necessary to have the KVM working. Starting with a quick user guide that in case we have any questions it will show us even in a graphical way how we can solve anything from the simplest thing to the more complex. And of course hopefully this video will help in that process as well. Besides the user guide we will have all sorts of cables. In this particular case for this model which is a display port model we will find eight display port cables and really high quality cables. We also have four USB type A to type B cables so that we can connect and I will share with you in just a few moments how we will do the connectivity and also a extension infrared cable where we can just connect and give it a bigger extension so that we can reach with the remote control even further beyond the normal range of the remote and that includes the <laughs> remote control that we will see later on how it functions now a power adapter and finally these here is right over here that we can use if we are going to mount the kvm on a rack for example then we can mount these here is right here on the sides and that is it now looking at the kvm itself in terms of build quality it's a t smart kvm so all metallic that will give us this great infrastructure and besides that it will also give us the cooling or the best cooling solution possible in terms of interface at the front we have in this particular model a audio connection usb type a and usb type c and then we have the screen right over here which we will check in just a few moments then we have the necessary buttons to operate the kvm the infrared receiver and the on and off switch but for a better understanding we will see how it all functions in just a few moments at the back we have four inputs for our computers labeled by pc1 up to pc4 and for each input we will have two display ports that will come from our computer and one usb type b that will come from our computer as well now as we have seen we have the necessary cables in this particular case the usb type b that will connect right over here and will lead a usb type a to our computer and at the same time the display port cable that we will connect to input a to our computer and input b to our computer and that's the reason that we have the eight display port cables right over here so one two three four five six seven eight these are the ones that we will be needing so for every computer we will have this set of inputs now on the output side we will find that we have output a and output b so this will represent our display a and this will represent our display b and at the same time we have right over here the port the usb port for the keyboard and mouse where we will be able to connect the keyboard and mouse and we will take advantage of the shortcuts that we will see later on on a video as well and we also have the usb 3.0 port right over here and the extension for the infrared where we can connect basically this extension cable that comes included and then at the end we will also have the power input to connect our power adapter and basically this is what's necessary to make it run and just as an example we've got here a graphic card which will represent one of our computers and in this particular case we have three display ports and one hdmi output so we can use two of the display ports available so this will represent one of our computers and the connection is quite simple the only thing that we will require to do is to use one of the included display port cables and we will connect on the 
display or input A in this particular case, there's only one way that we can connect it and we will have one end of the cable which we will connect to our computer and this let's call computer A. So I just need to connect to any of the display port outputs on our computer. Now in terms of the cable of course we are too close so the cable will be uh, right over here but in a normal situation we will have the cable stretched. Now the other connection is as easy as the first one we just need to connect one of the display ports to the input B in this particular case so we have A and B connected to exactly the same computer which in this particular case is represented by this GPU right over here so let's connect right here and there we have A B connecting to A B on the KVM and to have a cleaner area here we are with the cables connected representing PC number one and input A and input B and the final step to connect the computer would be to connect the USB B port right over here on the KVM and then the other end of the USB A to our computer and that would finish up the installation of computer number one. And at this moment we've got a setup ready that we connected as we've seen before through display port and we've got here four computers and two displays. We are going to see the basic usage of the KVM, the interface and then followed by the usage of the remote control and then lastly we are going to see some shortcuts that we can use with our keyboards to make our life easier. Now if we take a look right over here we will see this display which will give us a lot of information and we will see how it works. We also have all these buttons that we are going to see the basic usage. Now at this moment we've got number one right over here and this means that this is computer number one displaying and then we also have what it means right over here. Now it means that computer number one is with audio, is using USB and it's using the display A and display B which at this moment I've got display A right over here and display B right over here so that it's easier to understand the workflow. Now if I want to change the computer number one to computer number two I just need to press this button right over here and it will change the two displays to a different computer and as we can see the USB drive that I've got right over here will also come to the machine that I just selected which in this particular case is computer number two. So if I go to my computer right over here I will see that I've got a 64 gig drive here that it's the one that I'm using right over here. Now there is a way that we can lock and leave the USB uh, devices locked to PC number one or two or whatever we want but in this particular case we are just moving through computers and I want to use everything on each of the computers. Now we are on number one on number two sorry and if I move to number three what we will have is computer number three using both displays. Now the latency will depend on the computer that we are using and also on the displays that we are using and sometimes you will see it faster sometimes slower depending on the machine that we have connected. Now if we want to go to number four we need to press button number four there we go we have completed the cycle and this is basically the simplest way to use and we can see right over here that at this moment computer number four is controlling everything. Now let's imagine that I want to go to computer number one but in this particular case I want to display right over here computer number two for example. So the only thing that I need to do is to press the B which is the display B. So if I press it I can then select which computer. So if I select computer number two it will give me computer two right over here and computer one right over here. Now if we move the mouse around what I can see is that I've got the mouse on computer number two and we can see right over here that computer number two is using audio, is using USB and it's using display B and computer one it's only using the display B. A. So what we can do right over here if we want to swap I can just press this button here which uh, has the symbol and if we press it it will change the keyboard and mouse and also the USB devices to this computer. So this might be very handy if we want to swap 
really quickly. So I just need to press here and I'm back on computer number two. And then once I finish this task, I can press and I can go to computer number one and I can keep on working and doing the task that I was doing right over here. Now, one of the things that we might want to do as well is, for example, if we change everything back to computer number one, and for example, if I don't want that this USB drive being disconnected for computer number one, I can lock it and I can press this button right over here and say, yes, I want to lock. Now, at this moment, if we see this symbol, it means that the USB is locked to computer number one. So if I change to computer number two, what happens is that the audio is going from number two, the display A and B is going to number two, but the USB drive is assigned to computer number one. And if we take a look at the computer two here, we no longer have the USB drive here. So if I want to have the USB drive back here, what I need to do is to unlock it. So I need to press here again and then press it and it will unlock. And at this moment, the USB is on number one. But if we press right on number two, it will go to number two. And in a moment, we will see the USB drive back here. And this is basically the usage that we have right over here. Really easy with our eyes to just follow along and see what is happening with our setup. Now let's take a look at the remote control. Now the remote has a few buttons right over here. It has number one, number two, number three, number four, which is the computers that we have. And it has display A and display B on M and P letters. So what happens if I press number one, for example, it will change everything to computer number one. If we press number two, it will change everything to computer number two, number three if we want to and uh, as we can see number three is the slowest computer that i have so it's the one that takes more time and then number four will cycle to number four so this is the complete cycle we can also press the button right over here which says cycle and then we can cycle through but the most uh, interesting option here is uh, it just did cycle through but the most interesting option as i was saying and let me stop the cycle through, which is not necessary anymore. It was just as an example. I can just press, for example, if I want to swap the display A, which is on number two, I can press here and then I say, okay, number one on display A and we've got number two on display B. And if I want to change display B to number three, I can just press this button and select number three and there we go. At this moment, we have PC number three right over here and PC number two or number one, sorry, right over here. And if I want to change everything to number three, for example, just press the number and it will get back to number three. So we have all the options available with the remote control that we can use if we are a bit further from the KVM or if we want to have it on our desk and then just press the button and there we go. So it's just another option. There are also shortcuts on a keyboard that we can use to make our workflow even faster and we can use the control, the right control key to do. If I press twice, we can hear a beep, which by the way, we can disable that beep. If I press control, control and page down, it will cycle to computer number two. Let's imagine that I don't want this beep, control, control F11. And at this moment, I don't have the beep. So if I press control, control, page up, I will go to computer number three, but we no longer have the beep. So if I go control, control, page down, we will be back to computer number two and no beep at all. If we press control, control, F11, we will have the beep once again. Now I will leave the beep for the rest of the video, just so that we can see that I'm pressing a command and it's easier to recognize on that side of the screen. Now, if I want to go directly from number two to number four, for example, I don't need to go page down and page up. I can just press control, control and select number four on the keyboard. So easy as this. So control, control, number two. And there we go. We will be back with number two. Now, if we just want to change one display, what we can do is press control, control, and then the arrow key, left display A, right display B, and then the number of the computer. So control, control, left number one, and there we go. We just changed display A to computer one, and we still have computer number two right over here. Now, if I want to change this to computer number three, 
control control right and number three and there we go we will have computer number three right over here and computer number one right over there so it's also a really interesting shortcut to use and if we want to change the mouse and keyboard control which at this moment for example is on computer number three here on display b i just need to press alt twice and there we go and I just have on my computer number one right now with also my USB drive. And if I do it again, we will have on this one right over here. So I can just open a window and we can check it right over here. And this is it regarding the basic usage of the KVM. So in this particular case, we have a four computer two displays through display port. And as we could see, we can control it on the KVM. We can see right over here what we are exactly controlling. And then we also, of course, have the option for the remote control and also the keyboard. And that is it. Hope that the video was helpful to understand how easy it is to use a T-Smart KVM and and how it will improve our life, especially in multitasking tasks with different computers and different displays at the same time using just one set of keyboard and mouse and all our USB peripherals. That being said, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.